for the uh, what do you think is the the num- the next step the first step or the number one step for the average person with you know the kind of the normal job that they might be losing if they have s- some debt they got some credit card what's the next step for them to not only survive but thrive in this market in this time well i always say quit your job but that's not you know i don't have a job i never i've, I've only had one job and I never wanted a job after that because I had to be hungry. Mm. Not to say, you know, but uh, it, we're all different. We're humans, we're different beings. If, if I show you this diagram here, you know, this, it's why I created my cash flow board game. Mm-hmm. Because we have four different intelligences. We have mental intelligence. We have, I don't know what that one is, physical intelligence. You probably have very good physical to make, mm-hmm. you know, all and all that. Yeah. Emotional intelligence, but spiritual intelligence. So I went to military mm. school in New York. The first thing is spiritual. You know, I become a Marine. It's spiritual. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because you, you're putting your life on the freaking line. Yeah. You know, so Nazim Taleb, you know, wrote the book, The Black Swan. He also wrote uh, Anti-Fragile. He says there's three kinds of people in the world. There's fragile. And that's what our school systems are putting out. Fragile, mm-hmm. MP, snowflakes. And that's your choice. You want to be that way? Have a good life. Mm-hmm. The second type is that so a fragile is like a champagne flute. Yep. You hit it, it shatters. Then the second one is called robust. And a robust person is like the rock. You know, you can pound on them, dump on them. Yeah. They take it. But that's all they do. They take mm. it. And that anti-fragile is somebody like you where they pound the crap out of you. And you get smarter and better because of it. Mm-hmm. So I love Nazim Taleb. You know, a lot of people call him Dr. Doom. But the way I look at this whole thing, this economy is, we're probably going into a depression. You know, we're not going to get out of this one. Really? Oh, yeah. And so the thing is, is this good for you or bad for you? I'm looking forward to it. You know, the last, the last crash was 2008. <clears throat> and I made more money in 2008 than in my whole life. So this one here, 2000, you know, what is it, 2020? I'm going to get even richer. But yeah. other people are going to get poor. And if they're baby boomers, they're going to blame it on this coronavirus. Oh, my health. You know, the, hey, hit the road. Put on some running shoes. Change your diet. Get some sunlight. Mm-hmm. You know, get healthy. Don't, get, don't be a wimp. But, oh, no, I'm so afraid of dying. I'm going, you're already dead. You don't even know it yet. You know? <laughs> In the Marine Corps, you know, in the Marine Corps, we used to call them corpse people. A right. Corpse, <laughs> corpse, not core, yeah. A corpse man. No, a corpse man. A corpse man is a person who's dead but doesn't know it. <laughs> wow. They're so afraid of dying, they're already dead. Yeah. It's about and taking action, best. taking control of your life, taking control of your health, your finances, everything. This is the best time to be alive right now. I did an interview with uh, Dave Ramsey uh, last week, and he said, yep. you know, the last – three or four recessions or down economies, whatever you want to call it, crashes. He said, I made more money during those times than I do in in good times. So I'm hearing him say that. I'm hearing you say that. How did you make more money then? And how are you planning to turn this into an opportunity to make more money now for you? What are the things, the actual like action steps? Is it investing more in the stock market? Is it real estate? Is it buying other assets? What does that look like for you? Well, no, the lesson is here, you got to choose your teachers wisely. When the market crashed in 2008, guess how much money I borrowed? A lot. $300 million. No way. From what? private investors, the bank, or how does, that, how does that work? Because interest rates were dropping and real estate prices were going to the toilet. And when I walk into my banker, this is what Rich Dad Poor Dad is about. Rich Dad Poor Dad is about a financial statement. Mm-hmm. Income statement, balance sheet, statement of cash flow. It's a book on accounting. People don't even know it's a book on accounting. So I walked into my bank with my partner and had all this property that was floating to the surface. And I say, I'll take them off your hands. I just give me, give me the money to buy the property. Wow. That's cojones. 300 million. Give me the money and I'll buy your properties for you. <laughs> That's crazy. So it depends. And this is my whole thing. I am now... 700 million, almost a billion in debt. Really? You know why? Because I don't pay any taxes. The more debt I have, the less tax I pay. And the average guy goes, how do you do that? Because you have bad teachers. 
And so it's this whole thing that you got to choose your teachers wisely. That's mm. why I wrote the book, Fake, Fake Money, Fake Teachers, Fake Assets. I don't touch that garbage that Wall Street puts out. I don't have a 401k. I don't have stocks, bonds, mutual funds, ETFs. Doesn't mean you shouldn't, but I don't need them. Okay? Right. right. And the other part is, look, for you young guys, the best teachers are not in colleges. The best teachers are on YouTube. The mm. best teachers are on YouTube. Wake up. You know, this guy, George Gammon, he's fantastic. Patrick Beth David, mm -hmm. fantastic. You know, he's great. Jim Rickards. The fake teachers are in colleges. And they're telling you to get a job. Right. The corporate ladder. You know, Patrick Beth David said it the best. <laughs> and I love that guy. He says there's two kinds of leaders, wartime and peacetime. And a peacetime leader is a guy like my poor dad. He goes through all the right schools. He has all the pedigrees, the credentials. He does all the right things. He climbs the corporate or the government ladder and all that. Or a wartime leader goes to, goes to war. So Jobs, Steve Jobs, mm -hmm. a wartime leader. I'm a wartime leader. The difference is I went to war. I went to war twice on the front lines. Yeah. And I changed. What happened? So I joined the Marine Corps. I go to flight school in Pensacola. I learned to fly. I go to Camp Pendleton. I strap on my weapons. I go to advanced weapons in Camp Pendleton. I go to Okinawa. And then they send me into Vietnam. And I, I came out of Vietnam about four months later, back to, to, back to restage in Okinawa. And I thought everybody had changed. I looked at the uh, fellow Marines and I thought they were, and it wasn't that they were, I had been to war. <laughs> you got tougher. You no, got no, stronger. It's, just, it's different. When, when somebody's trying to kill you, every single mission, I went down three times. No way. Yeah. And I came back stronger and tougher. So I come back to Okinawa. I, I get like a week off and they're going to ship me back into Vietnam again. I said, what happened to these guys? And it wasn't that they changed, I changed. So what happens to entrepreneurs who go out and they get their ass handed to them and they survive, if you survive, you see the world differently. And so that's mm. what happened to you when you get injured and all this. Yeah. You see a different world, whereas some um, peacetime who's climbing the corporate ladder right now, they just lost their job. They're sucking their thumb. You know, this is the worst time for them. Yet for a wartime leader, this They're crisis, excited. They're excited about it. Yeah. It's the best of times. Yeah. If, if you're an entrepreneur right now, the world's open to you. If you're an employee, your world's dead to you. What if, yeah. An entrepreneur can create their own success. Yeah. What and advice... Oh, you know, sorry, go ahead. It's a job. Mm. They're a peacetime warrior. Remember, see, watch Patrick Beck David, you know? He's war great. Leader, peacetime leader. Which one are you? You know, I mean, no, that's, that's what it comes down to. Yeah, that's true. So this is the best of times for the wartime guys. Horrible yeah. time for peacetime. Right. And, and for the people that are the wartime people, what is the, the best advice you would give them now for the next year, two years to – capitalize on how do they make more money? How do they make their millions during this time? What would you say? You, you can't make money now. You should hang it up. I, I, I tell all you freaking millennials, man, you got, the, you know, I don't know where it is. I got, I got this iPhone. If yeah. you can't make money with that, hang it up. You know, like we used to say, hang up the jock strap. You're yeah. not going to the team. You can't make money with an iPhone through social media, through marketing. You have the world at your fingertips and you can't make money. The problem is between this year and this year. It's not out here. It's in here. That's why you've got to choose your teachers wisely. Yeah. You know, so let me just say it again. The best teachers are on YouTube. So is the best porno. Take up your mind. Make up your mind what you want to listen to. You know right. what I mean? We have I a choice. So uh, I'm just being real to you. I hear you, man. No. I hear, I hear you. What's, what's the best investment people can make then to, to oper uh, capitalize on this opportunity? Is the investment in education? Left ear. Look, if you're poor right now, it was called look in the mirror. That's mm. what my friend always said to me. Says, if you're looking in the mirror right now and you see a loser, that's what you are. Mm. You can't make money in this economy. You better change your thinking. You know, the, you know, hindsight is twenty twenty, as I said. Yes. Yes. So I was. If you're looking, at, you know, you don't have any money. You don't have a job. Your boyfriend or girlfriend has left you, and uh, sitting there, he goes, "Well, how did I get here?" 
how did I get here? There was a, there was a great book called, uh, you know, Gulag Archipelago by Solzhenitsyn. So he gets thrown in this in a um, concentration camp or a gulag in Siberia. And he says, how did I get here? You know how he got there? Because he was a peacetime leader. Mm. Didn't fight back. So people are being sold to build, go to school, get a job, pay taxes, mm -hmm. save money, get out of debt, buy a house, the house is an asset, and invest for the long term in a well-defined portfolio of stocks, bonds, mutual funds, and ETFs. And I do none of that. And why do you recommend the opposite? Because I don't have to do that crap. That's, that's Kool-Aid. Go to school. Go to school. What do they teach you about money? Nothing. Get a job. You pay the highest taxes. Pay your taxes. I don't pay taxes. Get out of debt. Well, debt, money is debt after 1971, if you know your history of money. Your house is not an asset. Your house is a liability. And why would I invest for the long term in the stock market when I can make my own assets? I don't need the stock market. I'm not saying you shouldn't. Mm -hmm. But I create my own assets. I create my own cash flow. Every you mean, day, I can- you mean, through your, you mean through your business, through your- your, right, your creativity. I'm, I'm an entrepreneur. Yeah. Most people are employees. They're looking for jobs. I'm just looking for, so like right now. Should entrepreneurs invest in, in the stock market? Do you think if you're entrepreneurial, you should invest in? Look, find a stupid teacher who's going to tell you what to do. <laughs> I'm asking your opinion. I'm curious as a teacher. I, I don't give advice. Mm -hmm. You know, I wouldn't follow Warren Buffett either. Mm. You know why? Because he invests the money. Why would I let him invest my money? I want the fun. So what's the, what's the investment you make the most in? Look, please hear what I'm saying. Yes. I made a fortune in 2008. Mm -hmm. 2020, I'm making more money. I'm paying less taxes. It doesn't mean I don't have problems, but I'm prepared for this. Mm -hmm. My biggest problem right now is because everybody's taking a vacation. I can't get enough product. I'm selling out. You know, my cash flow gain is sold out. It's selling out constantly all over the world. All over the world, I get royalties from my book sales. My book sales are going through the roof right now. So you I'm making more money. Information, yeah. There's two kinds of discipline. There's internal or self-discipline, and then there's external discipline. So right now, if the world's kicking your butt, that's external discipline. Mm. And if you're self-disciplined, the world's kissing your butt right now. It's up to you. So that's why I love the Marine Corps. That's why I love going to military school and not a university. Because I got my ass kicked every single freaking day. Mm. First word I had to learn at the, Marine, at the academy, mission. Mission is spiritual. Mm. What's your mission? And my mission has always been to serve people. Most people, all they give a fuck is making money mm. and screwing people. That's called the Federal Reserve Bank, Wall Street, and all that. I want nothing to do with them. So I just don't play their game. But you have to get smarter not to play their game. So that's why YouTube has the best, te best teachers. This guy, George Gammon, man, he's a great, great teacher. Patrick McDavid, fantastic teacher. You know, this, uh, Cardone, fantastic teachers. So choose your teachers wisely. That's, all I, that's what I say, because I, I have to choose between my rich dad and my poor dad. Mm -hmm. My poor dad, PhD, poor, helpless, and desperate. And that's what he wanted me to do when I came back from Vietnam was get my master's degree, get my PhD, and fly for the airlines. If I had done that, you know, my friends who flew for United, they're broke. You know why they're broke? Because Wall Street stole their pensions. Mm. You know, it's called an ESOP, Employee Stock Option Plan. 